numbers up, numbers up, numbers up for my family. How you justify it in your head, but for 400 a month, guess what? Just like you said you could do it here, it's the same thing here. And guess what? You've got one or two choices you'll do in a year from now. In a year from now, you either refinance the vehicle, right? Go to a local credit union, better credit, you'll get lower rates, which will equal what? Lower payment. And you'll keep driving the same car you're in. Or two, you'll trade in the car that you have now, okay, in a year from now. Trade it back into me. Guys, hold up, don't do, and watch this. Watch this little close I tie in at the end. Remember how I said a minute ago, you know, take that 21 bucks and go take your wife out to dinner and reward yourself, right? This is how I always use this last little part. I'll say, hey, so you basically take and you know, you're paying your $100 right for your credit, you're paying the 300 for your car, it's a $400 payment. What you do after a year is you talk about the refinance. It's simple, better credit, lower rates, smaller payments. You keep driving the car you're in today, this same car, or in a year from now, these people are credit people. They probably didn't fall in love with this car anyways. You probably helped land them on it, right? Do you think they'd want to buy a better car if they could buy a better car with a lower payment? Yeah, so I always fish with that and I say, hey, or in a year you come back in, you trade it in, and then guess what? You see me again, we trade the vehicle in, we buy a nicer car, newer, with a better rate and even keep a lower payment and just trade out of it. But in the end, it's your decision which way you decide to go. You see what I mean? But stop, you better do me a favor because I'm really building your credit and taking you to the next level. I need you to do me a favor. You better not go down the street and buy somewhere else when I make you a 700 credit score, right? And then I want you to come back to me. Is that fair? And that's how you end it and you close them. Does that make sense? You tie it in at the end. Does anybody not understand anything or have any questions? Let's ask right now. Yeah, I'm using to go, I think up to the highest I've gone is like 150. Uh-huh. Once we get at, where do you want, where's the comfortable cutoff? I mean, I think 100, 150 bucks is pretty fair. And then I, I, I felt like I was reasonable. I really had to push myself. You got uncomfortable, Matt? You had to get uncomfortable for me? <laughs> Matt's like, I really felt uncomfortable to bumping him over 150. You know what I mean? Like, come on, man. <laughs> He's like, I just really want to be comfortable. If, if anybody has trouble with this clothes, I have a printout step by step. So just text me and I'll send it to you. Okay? Okay. Yeah, just Jackie used to teach me this in class. All the time. Don't to guys. All the clothes, if you get stuck in something, just text me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay.
Number seven, number seven, watch this, hold on. No, no but here, watch. This number seven is just called negotiating. You want to get into some real negotiating, right? You guys think you're great at negotiating? You want to get in there? You want to try a piece of that? Do it here at the end. Watch. Let's say I get this guy down to 30 bucks, right? And I'm at the very end. You know what I'm saying? Let's say, uh, let's just make a point. Let's say guy says, Andy, here's the deal. I'll, I'll go to three, I'll, I'll go to 370. I'm not going a penny more than 370, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? That's where I'm done. Okay, where, where, where's my difference? 30 bucks. Well, you always learn in this business, like when we first got in, is this is 22 years ago. Break it into a small number, right? Break it to a small number. Break it to a small number. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I'm, let me ask you guys this, okay? If I looked at your daily bank account, your daily bank account, at the end of each day, if there was a dollar difference in your account, a dollar a difference, and you knew that your car was completely covered under warranty, you had the best gas mileage in the country, you were building your credit, and the an account was a dollar difference a day, guys, you could fix that by not going to a 7-Eleven and buying a small soda. Do you understand that? Would you give up a, sm a small soda for that to get that car? Yeah. Yeah. You answer it for them, okay? You just break it down. And, and you can break it down in different ways. I could say, guys, there's 30 days in a month. We're $30 away. Guys, that's a, that's a dollar a day. To put the car you love in your driveway for less than a dollar a day, you, you can't buy this for a dollar. You know what I'm saying? Are you kidding me? This? Give that up and take your new car home. Right? Hey, go, 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 go to Sam's and buy these now. We're going to 7-Eleven. Come on, guys. This is silly. Okay? And then close them down, okay? That's breaking it down to a small number. That is called negotiating, okay? That is like real negotiating, like true negotiating, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so I just want to tell you, like, that right there, these are the ways to bump people on payments. And, dude, we didn't really negotiate even the whole time. Like, you can get into that. You know, you can always ask, like, well, don't you see value in going from a 2012 to a 2018? I mean, honestly, like, when you look out your window in your driveway, for a dollar to drive a car that drives a hundred times better, I mean, I'm sure you'd be willing to pay five dollars a day difference to have the nice ride of an 18 instead of a 2012, right? But I'm only asking for a dollar. You see? Yeah, remember the trade question? Yeah, what, what, what are the two, remember the two reasons you said why you wanted to trade out of your car right now? Remember you said it sits too low to the ground and your back hurts? Guys, to, do you think that any, can a doctor fin your, fix your back problem for a dollar? No, I can. I just did it. Sign here. <laughs> what? Does that make sense? Hey, I'm just, I'm just saying, you want to negotiate? Well, negotiate, right? But if you came out of the gate doing that every time, doesn't that sound kind of a little car salesman -ish, right? You know what I'm saying? I don't even know if that's a word, but it sounds, like a, it sounds like you're a car salesman coming out of the gate. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can do all this stuff. No, no, no. Wait, use all this to get down to the small number, and then when you get real small, then finish them off with some negotiating, okay? Level up, level up, sky's the limit, numbers up, numbers up, numbers up, for my family, for my life, for my kids and for my wife, I level up, level up, level up, level up, let's get to work. And, and this is kind of role playing here, because I want to just kind of talk about some scenarios about how things normally go down. Is that cool? Okay. All right. I'm going to be the customer. You're going to be the salesman. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm buying. I'm buying, and you're selling me an 18 Chevy Traverse. Doesn't even matter what this is. Okay. Has has no value even what I'm buying. The objection I'm going to give is I think the price is too high. Okay. Which we hear that all the time. Okay. This is inside on the pencil. So that's what you're selling me. This is the price. That's the payment. I don't even worry about cash down or nothing. Okay. No, no, no. I just want you to present it to me, and then I want you to just kind of give me your uh, overcoming objections. You know what I'm saying? Cool. So I'm the salesman, so congratulations, yeah. Mr. Customer. Uh, I got you approved on the 2018 Chevy Traverse. Uh, I got you at 399 a month. Sign here. Yeah, I think that price is way too high. Okay. Um, I understand. Um, I understand the price is too high. Uh, if I was able to fit that within your budget, would you take one today? Sure. Okay. Um, and then I'm kind of stuck at right here. So this this price. So you want it lower, right? Exactly. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't know how to overcome that. No big deal. Hold on, let's chill, okay? Somebody come swap out with him real quick. It's okay, no, you did good. So somebody swap out. Oh, you wanna try? All right, hold on, hold on, Matt. Let's give Lewis and then you run right behind him. Lewis, come here. Matt, come on back around, little buddy. Don't be scared. All right, Lewis, ready? All right, Lewis, I'm gonna have you pick right back up so we don't have to restart, okay? Lewis, I appreciate it, but I think the price is too high. I completely understand. Oh, would you mind being a little bit more specific? Why do you think the price is too high? Yeah, I just think it's too high. Definitely. Are you talking about sales price or the monthly payment? Well, I think they're both too high. Hold on, this is how negotiations go, am I right? Yeah. Okay. All right, cycle through. <laughs> hold on, you did good. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I wanna hear. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on, Matt. So we presented it, we're at the price, you've already hit me with it. Yeah, I'm just, just basically, you presented it, and I'm gonna say, hey, I think the price is too high. Okay, I understand. Uh, would you be more specific why you think the price is too high? I just think it's too high. That's my fault. I didn't completely explain our pricing structure here at the store. As, as we find it to be pretty dishonest. If I, if I hit you at 21.9 and we haggle and negotiate and we get it down to 18.9, 18.9 is still the real price. But you may think you got a great deal, but you're never going to buy a car from me again. Does that make sense? Because I tried sneaking one past you. You're not going to. You, I don't want to say this car. I want to say every car you buy for the rest of your life. Okay. That, you see why 18.9 is the real price? I do apologize. <clears throat> Excuse me. I apologize for. Uh, uh, I You're okay. Uh, You're okay. Listen, to get up here, it's a little bit awkward. It's no big deal. I'm better at the table. Hey. Uh, hey, listen, you're doing no, a good job. Don't worry about it. This is where you're at. You wanted to you wanted to use basically the non-motive negotiation mm -hmm. close, right? Which means the guy's just probing for a better deal. That's all I'm doing. Am I right? Do I have a reason why I think it's too high? No. I'm just hitting him for a better deal. That's all I'm doing. Okay. Which happens daily, right? Okay, all right, let's circle, let's cipher out if, if there's one more person that wants to try it. You wanna try it, Trayvon? I'll try it. Listen, hey, here's the deal. I, I wanna try on five or six guys and then we're gonna talk about it. But I just wanna show you what the life of a salesman kind of looks like. And if you, if you have a good little system in place, remember I talk about systems? We all have a payment system now, right? Here, 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 here. We, we run it like that. Well, this is the exact same. It's no different. It's the same thing, okay? All right, let's go. I think, I think, so here's the deal. I'm buying the Traverse, 18.9, 3.99. I think that the price is too high. I think the price is too high. Okay, awesome. So we're at 18.9. Um, I understand, um, and I apologize. Um, we here at Jim Glover, we like to give our best pricing up front because we believe that it's more honest to give our best price up front instead of raising the price of $3,000 more and then dropping the price back down $3,000. Because not only do I want to sell you this car today, I want to sell you uh, every car you buy for the rest of your life. Does that make sense? Sure. Awesome. <laughs> hey, listen. You, hey, you did a good job, but listen. No, you did a good job, okay? This is what role playing looks like, okay? All right, how about this, okay? And, and, and I want to do this. I want someone to play the customer, and I'll be the salesman. Is that cool? Yeah, you actually, yeah I'll do it. Okay, but I want to show you something, okay? I want to tell you a three-step system, okay? And I'm going, to, I'm going to share this with you. I'm going to go through number one, okay? Which actually, I'm going to let him play the salesman here in just a second. I'm, I'm going to play it. Um, actually, I'm going to let him play the salesman for just a second, one more time. I'm going to tell you number one, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a three-step system. I want to tell you because we're going to role play it, okay? One is you always want to check the payment, okay? Let me explain what I mean. People don't always say what they mean. Does that make sense? Okay, they say something, but that's not really what they mean. They just say it. So if I say that the price is too high, am I saying that the price is too high because I th if I think the price comes down, the payment might come down with it? Right. right? But did I say the payment's too high or did I say the price is too high? Right, but what I meant to say was the payment's too high, but I didn't say that. So what happens is now you're trying to overcome a price objection, which really isn't even a price objection. It's a true payment objection. Does that make sense? That could be said, or I could do this, which I like that, but I try to pull that out for a minute, right? Like it doesn't matter what the price is as long as the payment's right. That, that could be said, but I'm afraid that there's salesmen that have said something in another store, right? And that could be like at the end 
when they're like, well, I still don't want to pay that price, but I'm okay with the payment. Then you could be like, honestly, you know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, you're not writing a check for it, right? And then you could go back into the payment part. Go ahead. Um, there, there's some variables in the situation as well. We're not knowing where the customer is as far as credit score. Let's say they got great credit. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Listen, let's say they have wonderful credit. You got the best credit you've ever seen in your life, okay? So there's no credit close. Here's what I would tell you. Remember what I said about finance penetration? about people like financing most of their cars. Most people that are financing are worried about payments, not price. They might ask about the price, but your goal is, is it easier to close somebody on price or payments? Which one? Payments. Payments. We always want to take them to payments, okay? So what do I do? Watch this. You, you, you be my customer and you tell me the price is too high, right? So, great news, Buy, buying this, here's your price, there's your, there's your payment, sign here, let me get your new car cleaned up for you. I think the price is too high. I think the price is too high. I like the vehicle. The test drive is great. I love it. Listen, Trayvon, other than price, right? Other than the price, are you okay with the three ninety nine? Yes or no? Not really. Okay, awesome. And how close to three ninety nine can you come? I was thinking, cause my buddy he bought one. You know, what? Two weeks what ago. are you paying now on your trade in? I'm paying three fifty. Cool, three fifty. Awesome. So basically. You afford, you, you want to pay three fifty. We're at three ninety nine. Is that right? Yes. Let me show you how new Ford, how affordable your new vehicle is. I flip the piece of paper over and I go straight into a payment close. Does that make sense? Like I'm not talking about price anymore. I'm never going to bring up price again. I'm just moving. Just move. Okay. Number one, you want to do a payment check. Okay. What did I do? I took my hand and I covered it. I say, look, other than the price, are you okay with this? And I said, and then I looked at him and he kind of paused. So I made him make a move. I said, yes, yes or no? Yes. Awesome. So when you say the price is too high, now I go back to the price. You see what I'm saying? Remember how I said have a system? The first thing is check the payment. When he says the price is too high, and don't get lost with me. Do you know what I'm saying? Are you, follow Are you following me? Okay. You give me some crazy. You're looking at my left eye. Right, Brandon? <laughs> and Brandon was telling me a left eye trick last night. Okay. But listen. Um, yeah, check. Uh, check, so check the payment number one, which means this. Anytime somebody says the price is too high, if you, have a, if you have a payment on the paper with it, if there is a payment with it, if it's a dual pencil, price, payment, pencil, you always say, take your hand, cover the price, and say, other than price, are you okay with the payment? No, I'm not. Awesome. How close to this payment can you come? What are you paying now? Let me show you how affordable your new car is. Boom. I'm, I'm straight into a payment close and I'm gone. David, are you following? You feel okay? Anybody not? Anybody lost at this point? Tell me if you are, please. And it, you, don't, you don't have to like, be weird to tell me that you're lost. Like, if, is anybody, everybody feel okay with this? It's pretty simple, right? It's a smoke screen. That's what it is, okay? All right, two, okay? There's motive, and then three, there's no motive. Okay, let me explain what I mean. Motive means that like, there's a real reason, okay? You might put real reason, no real reason, right? Like, or maybe, how about this? Motive would be like real reason, and then no motive would be like probing, right, for a better deal. Okay, let's just say probing for a better deal. Does that make sense? Like the dude's just trying you on for a better deal, which there's lots of those guys out there, okay? What's up? You ever seen, um, what, what, what is that movie called where that, um, is it Step Brothers? I think so. Where you, the guy gets shot in the, in the throat with a dart? Old school. Old school. That's why I go, man, you crazy. <laughs> right? You know when he got shot in the throat, like right before he went out? Does anybody, has anybody seen that? Yeah. Yeah, look, 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 look up Step Brothers. When they, and I would bring that up with that. I'd say, have you ever seen that Step Brothers deal? Or that old school where that dude got shot in the neck and right before he went out, he was like, man, you're crazy. <laughs> you're crazy, man. All right. And then move past it. Make something funny, make a joke, and then push past it. And say, but going back to the deal, right? Okay, so we can get you out of here. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Are you wanting to set your first payment due towards the beginning of the month, the middle of the month? What's going to work best for you and your family? You know what I'm saying? 
You have your title of your trade in? I mean, I'm, do a diversion question. Get off of it. Don't st Listen, that guy is dying for you to, to, to play his game. Don't do it. Move, okay? When you bring out the Penn State in my store, you have to uh, let them know that that monthly payment includes the warranty gap and you can make it something when you're spending those, they don't find the value or they feel they don't need that, and then they want a bonus of payment for you to remove that. That's okay. I'll handle that with you separately. Okay, because most people in here don't bring out front end, you know, back end products on the front. Yeah, that's okay. We'll talk about that. I'll, I'll help you with it, okay? Um, but anyway, say most of the time it's just a car or trade, you know, the front end stuff. They usually don't send out stuff like that. Now, some of you guys have dock fees. Who's got the biggest dock fee in here? Ours went up. When I first started, it was 249 We have 489 now. That's still low. 49 is low. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What's the biggest dock fee? What did you guys have? Five ninety nine. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say most stores are five ninety nine now in dock fees. Okay. Dude, so you need to be telling. We well, need to be telling people that the national average dock fee, right, is five ninety nine. So with that being said, how much is your dock fee? Seventy eight bucks. So you know that I'm five hundred dollars less in every store, so I can afford to be five hundred dollars higher in price and still beat my competitor store because my dog fee out the door, right? And at the end of the day it's the real money that you're spending. Am I right? Would you agree? So I can afford to be five hundred more, can I? Yeah. See? Put it back on them. You need to find your leveraging tools and punch them. Knowing that you just bumped every every customer five hundred bucks you talk to for the rest of your life. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? Like have the info, okay? But anyways, all right, so look, 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 look let's do motive. Okay, and you, you can go and sit back down. That's okay. We can act like it. That way you can take notes. Okay, but I just want to tell you. So motive means a real reason. So number one, just do a payment check. Okay, look. When you say the price is too high, are you okay with the three ninety nine? Yes or no? Man, I'm not worried about the payment. Let's say that's what they. Man, I'm not worried about the payment. Right? Guess what? Okay, that's a real price objection. Like this guy's not worried about the payment right now. Like he don't want to talk about it yet, or he truly isn't worried about it. Whatever that is, I just need to keep moving. You know what I'm saying? So when you say the price is too high. Here's my, my first thing. How will, I know, how will I know whether there's really a, a reason why he thinks it's too high or no reason? Well, you guys said the right deal. You said, when you say the price is too high, would you mind being more specific why you think the price is too high, right? That's like hot potato, okay? So Diaka says the price is too high. I say, Diaka, when you say the price is too high, would you mind being more specific why you think it's too high? Watch. Just throw it back to you. Cool, that is a real motive, okay? Saw another vehicle down the street, 1,500 or less, right? Okay, what about this? What if I say, you know, hey, Diaka, when you say the price is too high, would you mind being more specific why you think it's too high? Diaka says, I just think it's too high. Guess what, that guy's probing for a better deal, right? You've locked him up, he didn't hand something back to you in return, and that's what Singer and Trayvon were going over, right? The reason why I talk about word tracks, so in this word track book, it specifically has word for word every, use, every word that I use when I close. But every word matters. Because if you change one word, how much does it change? Think about it. You, you wrote a book, right? And that one book says, I've always had or not had Jesus in my life, right? Remember that one word? Changed everything. Yeah. It's supposed to be with him. But that out, that out is what changed everything, right? Dude, listen, one word, I, I mean this when I say this, one word can cost you your cell. I want you to understand that. One word. And when I say this, like, singer, right? You made 10 grand, right? When you dial in these word tracks deadly, you'll go to 20 grand. Like, like money will be made that much faster. Because here's the deal, okay? Anybody that's got good credit in this room, that can buy what they want, that can go in and buy something. Remember how I said the guy that looks like he's 85%, right? The customer clings on to the 15% of uncertainty and leaves or says no. If you're 100%, they buy. That's it. Live by these rules your entire life, okay? Is it okay to be 85%? Listen, when you started out with nothing, being 85% is a gift. You'll be closing more deals, you'll be making more money. That's called progress, okay? I don't ever wanna shoot you guys down with progress. 
But when you're on your own, like I want you to be so good at this stuff that like you're deadly at doing it. Does that make sense? Okay. What's so, the third one? so, three, it says something uh, so that says no motive. No motive. Uh -huh. No motive. Sorry, that, that looks bad. Look, let's do no motive. So let's close both of these real fast. And then basically what we'll do is we'll have a quick fill in because I want to move to the trade. I need to think about it and I'll get back with you. I'm going to nail those three fast because those are really easy. But I'm going to have Bubba talk to everybody probably maybe 30 minutes um, just about Facebook for a minute. The reason why is because I honestly say there's two ways to make more money, right? Raise your gross or sell more cars, okay? So some people are like, I don't need to post on Facebook. I don't need to do this. Look, I'm gonna tell you this, okay? It's one of the biggest and best things in the world. It brings in traffic massively, okay? I don't care who you are or where you're at, guys right now are crushing it off Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Just like we just talked to him. He said he sold three last week off it, right? I mean, those are deals you generated on your own, right? Alex, Jackie's little brother, right? I mean, that's all he lives off of. He's the top salesman in the store. They don't get any fresh traffic. How many of you right now, like, are, are I mean, and I, I hear this, are saying, I don't have enough traffic. Our store is slow. We haven't seen enough people this week. I hear that from you guys all the time. Dude, let's fix it right now, okay? Bubba is going to talk to you about Facebook remarketing, but I just want to tell you, like, Facebook in general marketplace is huge. Like, you need to own every avenue that you can do to create yourself being your own internet department, okay? And your managers, they don't even know what this looks like. This guy I'm talking about, like, they don't know what you look like. If Frankie was my manager and I work for him, Frankie, if I could drum in 30 car deals a day, like 30, or I'm sorry, a month, yeah, 30 would be great a day. But if I could dream in 30 car deals a month and you didn't have to spend any advertising money and it was my own stuff, what would you give for that guy? Anything, right? That guy exists. Jackie's little brother's doing it. You guys can all do it. We're going to teach you how to do it. And here's the cool thing. When you go back home, if you don't know how to do it, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just say you go home and you're like, man, I can't figure this out. Yes, you can because I'll help you figure it out, okay? We'll set a 24-hour plan with you. I would start out by saying, let's post five cars a day to Facebook. Every time you post one to Facebook, send me the ad. Guys, I got a cell phone, it's real simple. You send me the ad, boop, I look at it. And I'm like, dude, that ain't gonna work. You know what I'm saying? Change this. Okay, now you change it, now you change it. Now you're getting deadly, and now leads start coming in constantly. You know what I'm saying? Some of you guys on Facebook, when you post, you don't know it, but your ads aren't even going out to Facebook, right? Your ads aren't even going out, okay? There's this little deal, like sometimes Facebook won't serve your ad. Am I right, Alex? And I know some of you guys know this, but Alex, I would, every time he posts something on Facebook, I have him send it to me. And sometimes it'll say redirecting. You know what that means? Facebook found something in it that it doesn't like, and it's not gonna serve the ad to anybody. Dude, you wanna know that it's redirecting your ad because that means no one else can see it. So every time you post something on Facebook, you want to send it to someone else, okay? To me, you know what I'm saying? Just send it to me. And I'll say, it looks great. That simple response is perfect. That way you know I'm getting them. Because if I can't see it and it says redirecting, I'll be like, hey dude, your ad isn't showing. It says this item is no longer for sale. Like that's a bad deal. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, yeah. So I just want to tell you, you want to know if that's happening, okay? All right, so look, let's move through these two real quick. All right, so first of all, real motive, okay? And then Diaka, you need to get out of here in about three minutes, okay? Okay, cool. All right, so check this out. If somebody says that they saw a car $1,500 less down the road, what is the first thing you do? Well, number one, you always negotiate on the back side of your sheet of paper, okay? This right here, this is our whole sheet of paper right here. Now I'm going to erase this stuff just so we can write on it, but everybody's got it. Motive, no motive, check the payment at first. Okay, so if, I, if I'm sitting here, and check this out, I say $3.99 a month, sign here, $18.9, guy says the price is too high, I say okay, and everybody should have a piece of paper, I want you to write this down, and I want you to show you how to write down on the back side of your sheet of paper. All right, so sign here, let me get your new car cleaned up. Hey, there's no way I can do that. I think the price is too high. Okay, when you say the price, and I obviously do the payment check, other than the price, are you okay with the payment? He says, I'm not worried about the payment. I say, okay, 
When you say the price is too high, would you mind being more specific? Why you think it's too high? And then I'd be quiet. And then he says, I saw one $1,500 down the street. That's fair. Let me show you how affordable your new vehicle is. I flip the paper over. This will be our backside. And just like I did old car, new car, guess what I put? I put, um, let's put our price. That's fair. You can label these however you want. You could put the name of your dealership, right? It would be, I don't know, wherever you work. Knippel Meyer Chevrolet, ABC Motors, whatever. Um, I put our price here, which is $18.9. Okay? And then over here, I'll put ABC Motors, which I'll ask them, obviously, where the other car is they saw. Does that make sense? I'll say, hey, where's that other price you saw? They'll say, that was at ABC Motors. Now, I always do the apples to apples, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, is it the same car? Did it have the same equipment? Did it have the same miles? Did it have all that stuff? You know, like, what all did it have? But at the end of the day, if it's kind of like close to the same truck, guess what? Our same car or whatever. These are for pre-owned, okay? Guess what? I'll take that, and, or even brand new, I guess you could use it, because you take your dealership benefit over the other store. And you basically take, and what you're going to start out with is you're going to start out by saying, hey, this is our vehicle right here. And obviously, when you said the price is too high, now listen, I want you to write this word down. When you said the price is too high, I said, let me show you how affordable it is. I flipped it over. I write our price, ABC Motors price. And I say, and this is how it starts up the ownership. Frankie was talking about how you turn everything into ownership, 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 ownership. When I say this, when you say the price is too high, Matt, are you talking about the purchase price or the ownership price? Which price was too high? Most people don't know what that even means. So you know what they'll say? What, what do you mean? I'm glad you asked. And I'm actually setting you up to say, what do you mean? I actually want that response out of you, okay? So, so David, check this out. So 18.9 is ours. You said ABC Motor has one for 17.4, is that right? It's 1,500 or less down the street, right? Cool, and when you said the price is too high, were you talking about the purchase price or the ownership price of the truck? Uh, what, look, let me explain what I mean, okay? So the purchase price is the price you pay today, okay? So you see the 17.4 and the 18.9? Well, at our store, our service inspection, let me explain this to you. We do 127 point service inspection, right? From A to Z, we go through these cars. NADA, they had a convention last year. I, I kind of always talk about something. The national average to spend on a car in the reconditioning department is like 300 bucks per car. Our store is averaging 1200 bucks per car. That's a lot of money, right? So the deal is, is that we don't just want to be like great in price. Like we want to be high in all the critical areas that are important to you and your family. Like you need to find something about your store. What, like what service inspection does your store do? What does it do? A, how many point? But you said what? 160. Watch it. Watch this. Forget I said that. And I'm just going to use your example. Watch. We do a 160 point service inspection. Do you know the national average service inspection for a store is a 27 point service inspection? Now I'm gonna tell you this, so at, 20, at 160 point service inspection, we do everything the eyes can and cannot see. I'm gonna explain this to you. See this car, right? When you put the two cars next to each other, they look the exact same. They're not the exact same. From the outside, tires shined up and clean, they look the same, but under the hood, Right, transmission flushes, making sure the cars are perfect. Do you know in the owner's manual it talks about all the inspections that are supposed to be done? 160 point service inspection covers everything. Guess what? Great businesses, right? What they do is they want to be high in all the critical areas, but it's hard for them to be high and not just a little bit higher in price, but we're the lowest in cost. And at the end of the day, if you work hard for your money and put your money in the bank, when your money leaves the bank, that's really the, the real money spent. Over here at ABC Motors, guess what happens? A lot of these guys do small 27 point service inspections. That means they do this. They just do everything the eyes can see. You know why? Because they want to be the lowest in price, right? But guess what? In the end, they're going to be the highest in cost. Why? Because they don't service the things that need to be serviced today down the road. You're the one that ends up spending that money. Does that make sense, David? And guess what? Since they only spend 300 bucks, I mean, I'm going to tell you this. Heck, you can't even buy a set of Maypop tires that may pop when you drive off the lot for 300 bucks. Am I right? So here's the deal. Our goal is to be high in all the critical areas that are important to you and your family. Whatever it is that you have that are your dealer benefits or the things that you do special in your store, you need to name those things here, okay? Does that make sense? Everybody has a different store, okay? Everybody has a different system. 
But you have to name these benefits right here. And your whole goal, why you label it this way, is that check this out. Your whole goal is to get here and to say, it's real simple. The normal trade cycle is anywhere from two to three years. Let's say at three years. Well, on my car, if you spend $18.9 today, which is the purchase price, okay, Doug, that's the purchase price. That's how much you spend. If you spend zero money over the next three years, other than oil changes, right, and the car has been wonderful, well, the purchase price was $18.9, and the ownership price was $18.9. And the ownership price, 90% of our customers have agreed that that's the real price that matters if money's your biggest concern, which you said that the price was too high, so I'm guessing that that was money. Well, over here at ABC Motors, since obviously they didn't take care of everything that was important to you and your family and they're not high in all those areas, well, guess what? You end up taking $2,000 over the next three years that you got to spend out of your pocket because the servicing wasn't great. Guess what? Not only to mention time and inconvenience that is inconvenient for you and your family. If I take the 17.4 plus 2,000 spent, I'm not the best at math, but the purchase price was 17.4, but the ownership price is 19.4. Well, at the end of the day, how much is the real money spent? The real money spends the 18.9. I'm still cheaper plus the time and inconvenience. This is called just like we did the purchase pay, like the payment versus the ownership payment, right? This is called money justification on cars. Okay, when somebody says that the price is too high, you always have to go for the ownership price. For my life, for my kids and for my wife, I level up, level up, level up, level up. Just to understand to you see all this scribble in between? This is for you and you only. Look, David, you're different than him, okay? He's different than you and we're different and all of us are a little bit different, okay? You guys have to figure out that you understand the concept here, that the purchase price is a one-time spend. That dangling carrot in front of your face, right? That dangling carrot, it doesn't mean anything. Like literally, it means nothing. It's a one-time bite. See you, brother. Thank you. Nice seeing you guys. Have a, have a good plane flight, man. Hey, so what I was going to tell you is that, listen, when I say this, the, the dangling carrot in front of your face is what I tell customers all the time. See, they want you to get a bite on that dangling carrot. Can I explain this to you? Our store, we do these reconditionings, right, that are 160-point inspections. You know why we do 160-point inspections? They cost more money than the normal inspection. Because when we sell you something today, we want you to drive it for as long as possible without spending any money. Okay? But over at ABC Motors, they, their goal is to have the dangling carrot and be the cheapest in price. So guess what happens? They can be cheaper in price, but they know in 30 days if they don't sell it, they're going to take the car back to the auction, right? And they're going to give it to the auction. So what they do is they bait you with this lower price, and guess what? In the end, you're stuck with all the ownership cost in the end. Does that make sense? So I want to tell you that what you have to realize is that does ABC Motors have your best intention about being high in all the critical areas that are important in your family? No, they don't have that best intention. You know what they have? They want you to buy it on their low price, but in the end, you're stuck with all the ownership costs. In our store, when we do a 160-point inspection, do you think we do it just because we want to spend money with ourselves? No, we do it because we want to be high in all the critical areas that are important to you and your family. Notice how I keep circling back around. I'm saying the same things. I'm just circling back around in them. Until the customer moves and they get my point, that's how I do it. So I just want to share with you that, look, you have to, and just rolling into this, you have to break down your point that this is your price, that's their price, and then you have to take this right here and make all your points. I could right here, look, we keep our cars for six months until they sell. We don't care because we make them perfect. Over here, they keep them for 30 days and take them back to the auction. Their biggest concern is the auction, right? Not you. So they can afford to price them a little, a little bit cheaper, but guess what? In the end, they're not gonna be the lowest in cost. I can be the highest in price as long as I'm the lowest in cost. Because at the end of the day, that's your real money spend. You just need to get really comfortable talking about these words, okay? I mean like really comfortable. So as I like talk to you guys, like you need to find your lingo, the way that you talk, the way that you work this stuff. So I was just sharing with you that at the end here, your ultimate goal is to make a presentation of your vehicle and all the things that your store has. So where basically you can show where the customer isn't gonna spend any money here. So this price is gonna be the same price here. And then over here, you wanna go into, hey, this price, it may look lower, but in the end, it's actually gonna be much higher because you're gonna end up paying the maintenance on it. Does that make sense? Yeah, everybody get it? 
You just gotta find your avenue of it, okay? You don't wanna negotiate down. Here's what most people do, okay? When remember I had Brandon get up here, right? Where'd Brandon go? Oh, there you are, right? Remember, Brandon, remember how you said this? I said 18.9, and you said, cool, so what you're saying is if I can make the numbers right, you do business today, and I said, sure. You know why? Because that's usually what most salesmen do, and then what happens? You say, well, you know, I mean, obviously, NADA says this, Kelly Blue Book, we put our first best price up front, you end up going through all this stuff, and then in the end, what happens? You end up dropping it down and saying, well, if I could do 18 grand, would you, you know, would you do that? Would you do this? And then all of a sudden, man, you've chart, you started with true negotiations, and I just want to stop you from getting into true negotiations, okay? Look, I'm telling you, when you get into true negotiations, there's a little bit of logic in it, but not a bunch of logic, okay? That's when you get personal, like emotional, um, like he said, a guy trying to give you a 6,000 less. You don't want to get into that. Do you want somebody to try you on with the best price they think that they want to spend? No, dude, that's a losing battle. Try to live and play in this area and practice this to death. If I knew your dealership you were in, I could tell you what to say here. So that's why I was talking to David. I was like, hey, what's your service inspection? 160, okay, cool. Do you know most stores like do a 10 point, 20 point service inspection? Well, if you've got a big service inspection, like you're gonna smash out the other place, right? Just use it, okay? Anyways, with that being said, that's how you handle the ownership cost of uh, somebody like really having a true reason why they think the price is too high. Write it down, get your pen and negotiate it. Um, and then what we were talking about is when somebody has, when I said, remember said no motive, right? No motive, which basically means this, the customer's probing for a better deal. I always do the, the empathy close, you know what I'm saying? Who has a better relationship with your customers than you? Nobody, man. And there's a word track that I put in that overcoming objection book and it's really long and you're like, man, this is a lot of words. But dude, like when you're getting like punked on in there and you're in the office, you don't want to leave, right? You don't want to sound like a car salesman. Remember how I said in the beginning, the meet and greet, the relationship you build with them, the way that you work with them, you know what I'm saying? How kind you are to them, the way that you handle yourself. All of those things are going to come play out when you're negotiating because I don't use the empathy clothes a lot, but think about this. If you're around, let's say a girl and a guy you're dating, if a guy hasn't cried in 10 years, right? And he's been around his girl the entire time. The first time he cries, she's like, oh my God, he has a heart. You know what I mean? Like she's just blown away. But if he cries every day, she's like, man, he's just a little baby. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sorry if you cry every day. I'm not trying to say that, but I'm just saying like, you know what I mean? I don't want you to feel weird. Some of you guys are really like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Anyways, with that being said, I just want to make a point to you that an empathy close is something that you can only pull off once during a sale. Just once. I mean, you don't want to pull it off twice, okay? It needs to be something when you pull it out, it needs to have massive effect. And you may think that this is like bull crap and like this won't work, but like it works all the time. I use it all the time. So I would memorize the word track in there and use it even a little bit different as you want. But the word track I use is like, if somebody says the price is too high, I'll say, I understand, you know, obviously other than price, are you okay with the payment? They say, yeah, I just think the price is too high. I'll say, all right, other than price, or I mean, my bad. I'll say, when you said the price is too high, would you mind being more specific why you think the price is too high? And at that point, I kind of look at them. Look, never break eye contact, like ever. Like always keep eye contact. And I can tell like if somebody swallows while they're talking to you, like if I'm talking to you and I go, am I lying? Yes, those are like signs. You ever like those, watch those FBI shows and they like tell you when somebody's lying? If somebody looks the other way when they're talking to you and they haven't normally broke eye contact but all of a sudden they're breaking eye contact, you're like, that guy's lying. You know what I'm saying? And customers are liars, right? They're liars. A lot of times we force them to lie. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, I was just saying like they're lying, okay? And what happens is we trap them to lie. So what I like to do is they have to ask for a better deal. Would you agree that a lot of the times when you buy something, whether you get a better deal or not, if you've got your mind made up you're gonna buy it, you're not at peace until you ask for a better deal. Would you, would you agree? If you're not gonna give me a better deal, that's fine. But if I don't ask for it, I'm not at peace yet. For my kids and for my wife, I level up, level up, level up, level up, let's get to work. I don't want to just say this car you buy today, I want to show you every car you buy for the rest of your life. 
If I was to take the price and mark it up three thousand dollars, and then bring it back down three thousand dollars, even if you felt like you won, would that be a great deal? No. And I shake my hand just like that. I say no. You see, I want a further relationship than just today. Mr. and Mrs. Customer, have I offended you and your family in any way by giving you my best price up front? Have I offended you in any way? They'll always say no. It's the response they will give you, and when they do, say, thank goodness. Thank you so much for your business. Guys, if you'll sign right here, let me get your new car cleaned up. And when did you want to set your first payment, dude? Have you guys talked about that towards the beginning? And I'm moving. I am divert, and I go into a close. That, 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 that phase, that little script right there has made me so much money. I have it memorized. I always say tattoo it on your heart, right? If you guys can memorize that little line right there, it sounds like a lot, but it's really not a lot, okay? Not if you want to make 100000 If you memorize that, you would never get stuck in the box on your own with the guy telling you he thinks the price is too high, and then guess what? You not knowing what to say. You can always go into that. Don't we put our first best price up front? Don't most dealerships put their good pricing on the internet? Okay. Guess what? Do you go in and honestly tell your customers constantly that, hey, we put our best price up front, we put our best price up, we put our best price up front? Yeah, every, so does every other dealership. You know what I'm saying? So guess what you have to do? You have to break in and put empathy in them. And guess what? I'm gonna share with you what this looks like with me standing up here is not what it looks like when I'm sitting down with him and I've got my hand on his shoulder and I'm like talking to him like this. Does that make sense? Like that's the main deal. Like I wanna share with you, that's the whole power uh, move. Me, me standing up, I'm not across the desk with you. When we're sitting down, like I've got my hand on you and look, contact, I love making contact, okay? So anytime I'm doing closing, I mean I'll say this, We'll talk like this, but when I'm about to close you, I'll say, listen, let me explain this to you. And I will put my hands on somebody, even if he's 10 times bigger than me. I don't care. I need to calm people down. When you're negotiating and you're dealing, you may say like, man, this sounds like it won't work. It all, it's all based off your personality. Like if you have zero relationship with these people, you can't be putting your hands on them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but because me, because I'm always like, you know, like guys, do we have a deal? You love the car, right? And give me a hug, dude. We're like family. Dude, I'll hug Doug. I don't care. And he's like, what? This guy's a I said, I'm a hugger, dude. That's what we do. I love you. We're family. Man, that's weird, dude. I don't tell guys I love them. You know what? We do now. That's it. Like, that's how I am. I know people want to make stuff awkward. I know they want to. I won't let them. Does that make sense? Does anybody understand where I'm coming from? Do you know how badly they don't want you to get close to them? I mean, I'm serious when I say this. Like, people don't want you to be that cool with them. You know why? Because if they're extra cool with you, they know you're going to take their money. So they want to be as cold as possible to you. So if you mirror match them, you're screwed, man. You have got to break the mold of the way that they have dealt with car salesmen. And, you know, Doug may be like, man, I really don't hug people. That's not my deal. Yeah, it is. It is your deal. Because you like people, right? You know what I'm saying? We talked about Christians. Christians love people, right? Treat them like you're in church. Love on them. Make this your environment. Do you know the one thing you can control? You can control your own environment, your own atmosphere, okay? I can walk into a store that's dead. You know what that means when I say dead? I'm talking like dead. No music on. Everybody's sitting around, you know, crying like little babies, right? And all of a sudden, I can crank it up in just two minutes. Do you know why? Because I bring that energy into that place. You have to carry your own individual atmosphere into every area that you go in. And guess what? You can't just be that dude that's just walking through life. There has to be something magical about you. Remember this. Guys, people can go and buy a car from anybody, right? They can buy from any dealership. There's nothing special about you. You know what I mean? I'm glad that everybody is like working really hard and all that stuff, but your customers don't care. You know what they care about? They care about the way they feel when they're around you, okay? What do people want to do with their best friends? Can two best friend guys give each other a hug when they're going through a hard time? Yeah? Guess what? Hug them. Make them do things with you that they would only do with the people that are closest to them. You have to be the one to initiate that. It's like thinking success is going to come to you and knock on your door. It ain't going to come to you. I'm just telling you, you're going to have to go beat the damn door down and find it. That's what life's about. 
So when I talk about like building close relationships with people and like making a lot of money, remember I said in the meet and greet, like the relationship is everything. Do you know what closers are great about? They don't look like normal people. You walk into an office and you see a guy sitting across the desk talking to a man, that guy's not making any money. I'm positive of it. I know that because I've been in dealerships my whole life. You walk in and you see a manager, he's up on a desk, he's got his arms around somebody, he's talking to him, and he's doing this and this and this, you know what I'm saying? And he's like, listen, I got this. And that guy's making money. You can tell. He's not like anyone else. Does everybody understand that? That's the way I want you guys to be. You may not have anyone else in your store that there's to look up to, but I want to share this with you. If you really want to be like a master closer, which is kind of what we're calling this deal, master closers, they don't look like anybody else. They are, when I say like the one percenter, they are the one percenter, which means if I was to take a hundred salesmen, we could pull one man out and we could call him the one percenter. You know what I'm saying? If I got a thousand salesmen, a thousand, we could pull 10 out, okay? And I want to tell you this, out of every hundred salespeople that line up, would you say that one of them is going to be making three, four hundred thousand dollars? Yep. And the rest of them, they're going to be fighting for the rest of the change. The reason why that is and the reason why you guys can all be the one percenters is because here's the test and here's the answers to the test. I'm telling you how to do it. Now, look, can you be an introvert? Yeah. Frankie said he's an introvert, right? Cool. You guys are all have talked to each other, right? You've all been here for a little bit, right? Whoever you are, if you're an introvert, Dude, you can do this. You know what, and, and we'll kind of we'll end here and I'm, I'm gonna let Bubba talk for, and we'll, we'll kind of take a break for maybe two, three minutes and then we'll jump right back into it. But I wanna tell you this. I was in a meeting when I was like 18 years old and I was in this dealership and there's like 100 sales guys. And I walk in and one of the GMs said, what is the one thing that we never stop doing? Like ever. And you know, we're like ABC, you know, like always be closing. You know what I mean? Like, we're trying to think of everything, you know? Always do a walk around. You know, everybody's just like naming stuff. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. All that's right, okay? You guys are all right. But the one thing you never stop doing is being an actor, okay? I gotta explain this to you. This is Joe, okay? When Joe's here and when Joe's at home, Joe acts a certain way. When Joe goes to work, Joe cannot act the same way that Joe acts when he's at home. If he does, he's not gonna be successful. And I'm not asking you to be different like morally or unethically. I'm saying, I, let's say Brad Pitt. He walks into, he's, he's probably at home, right? Chilling in his underwear, hanging out, just a normal dude, right? Right? And then he goes, and what, what happens? That they tell him how to act. They hand him a script, right? You know what I'm saying? Where's Dennis at? Dennis, isn't that how acting works? Dennis has worked with actors. Dennis, they hand him a script and they say, act this way. Am I right? Yeah. And you take that and you're like, all right, cool. So I'm crazy. I'm like a drug dealer now. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I have to do. And like, this is the energy I have to have. And you have to memorize the script too, right? Which is your training, which is everything we just went over. You have to memorize everything that I just told you. But watch this. If you do it right, you can make millions. Okay? That's it. And you memorize it and then you act it out. And when you guys go into work, okay, you cannot be the same you. Okay, you, are you married? You got a girlfriend? Yes. Okay, she thinks she knows you, right? Yes. When you're at work, she needs to be like, what in the hell is he in there doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, she doesn't need to recognize you. Like, if Jackie was at work, right, and she was watching me work, I don't want her to identify who I am because when I'm at work, I am a beast. You know what I'm saying? I am a beast. Like we work, we work together. Yeah, but I mean, I'm an animal. When I go into stores and I train, I, I flip the switch completely. Anybody that's hung out at my house, dude, I'm chill, man. I don't even want to talk about work. You know what I'm saying? I just want to hang out, talk about family, kick it, hang out. Let's go swimming at the pool. You know, like, let's do whatever, right? But once I put my shirt on, I put my coat on, I'm ready to go. By the time I walk into work, I'm a cold closer. I'm ready to go, I motivate, I encourage, I walk like 10 times faster than I walk when I'm at home. Like something inside of me starts like churning, it's like a machine. 
That's what I need you guys to understand. That's what made me all that money. And what still makes me money is I turn into an actor. I never stop acting. So as I'm like an introvert, when I go to become an actor, I become an extrovert. You know what I'm saying? Like I press full court. So I'm telling you guys this, that I need you to, to turn into that. You know what makes you do that? Do I know what? The well, the trigger is, is that honestly, you create your own environment. And this is my environment, okay? Like this is my space, right? Like I can't control any space that isn't around me, right? But I will share with you that no matter how he's feeling, no matter how, how he's feeling, if I can do this, if I can put my hands on him and I'm in my actor mode, he's done. I, I'll own him. And I don't mean that out of like arrogance or cockiness. I mean that out of confidence. I've been doing it for so long that when I go into a customer and I'm in my zone, see, because when I got my coat on, I'm in my zone. I know what, right? Am I, you know what I'm talking about? Frankie, you take your jacket off, right? Okay. You put on a t-shirt and put on some shorts. There's like, Frankie, and then there's like, Frankie. You know what I'm saying? You know, they put them, and then all of a sudden, That's it. That's why I tell people to dress nice when they go to work, because when you go to work and you're wearing the same clothes at home and then leaving and going to work and wearing the same clothes at work, like there's got to be like a costume change. You've got to switch. And some of you, you may say, ah, you know, I don't like doing that. I know it's comfortable to not change anything, but I'm telling you, right? You know, like you guys got to understand the value in like seeing yourself differently. Okay. I was sitting there training a store. Okay. And literally all the salesmen are way underdressed. I, they don't look like business people at all. None of them look like a business person. If I had, if I took the whole room right now and I was like, all right, let's take a test. And this doesn't mean you have to change your life and you may not even like what I say, but you don't have to love everything I say to understand and tell you why it works for me. If I was to go into Chick-fil-A right now, let's just say you work Chick-fil-A, and I was to say, hey, how are you doing? This is what I want to order. Hey, can you guess what I do for a living? Um, I don't know. Do, would you think that I'm a business person? So you'd say that I probably look like I have something to do with business, right? Awesome. Thank you. Now I know I look like a business person. I'm cool with that. I'll take that. They don't have to guess it right. I just need to hear that I look like a business person. If I was to take everybody in this room and I was to let them walk in front of that same Chick-fil-A person that has nothing to do with our business, okay? And, you know, they were to walk by, guess what? If you were to be like, hey, do I look like, what do I look like I do? Uh, <laughs> teacher? No, I don't want to be a teacher. I'm actually, no, I'm actually trying to take somebody out of their budget, right? And show them that I can manage their money. Does that make sense? Aren't you guys' goal to manage your money? Is that your deal? I mean, watch, David, when you go to work, right? Do they have a certain dress code that you have to wear? What, what's a dress code like? Shirt and tie? When you put that tie on, does David change up here a little bit? Feels good, doesn't it? That's my point. So I just want to tell you, like, never stop acting. That's where we're going to finish off. Um, on this price point, but never stop acting, okay? And if, you're, if your management staff doesn't require you to dress nice, who cares? Look, if you guys really want to change, don't they say that nothing changes until you change? Weren't we talking about that last night? I mean, like, what did Jim Rohn say? There you go. We were talking about Jim Rohn last night, right? Which I'm going to start digging into like crazy. Because I love, I mean, he was talking about that's one of his mentors where he started, right? That's where it all started for you. And he said, for people to change, what was it? I'm not writing it down. You know I'm a hard learner, okay? What is it? For things to change, you have to change, okay? So, Austin, do you have to wear a suit and tie to work? Okay? I'm going to ask you this. If you did, would you think differently? Do it. Do it. For things to change, you have to change. Now, does that mean that everyone else, right, has to, like, want you to change? No, no one else wants you to change, okay? Everybody wants you to stay right where you're at because they don't want you to ask them to do more, okay? You guys have to press yourself full, full court to change. So I just tell you this, right? I share my advice with you. In life, when I worked and I honestly didn't dress really sharp, that's when I made the smallest paychecks I ever made in my life. 
I didn't grow. I didn't want to learn more because I wasn't in a learning mood, okay? But the times where I put my tie on, my suit on, my shirt on, and dress nice, I'm gonna tell you guys, look, you can spend 100 bucks on a suit for like a suit jacket and pants, and you can look really nice. You can have three suits, and you can just rotate them. When it's 100 degrees outside, take it off. Roll your sleeves up. It's okay, you look like a businessman who's getting to work. You know what I'm saying? And it doesn't work for everybody, but it works for me. So you have to figure out who you are, right? Everybody saw Brandon yesterday, right? Brandon, you came last night. Last night, did you have your suit on? Yeah. Look, huh? Yeah, look nice and clean. But today, you put a white shirt on, right? It looks even sharper. You see how you can always elevate it one more time? And I know this, we're all together. We're not inside the dealership. So, you know, it, it, it is what it is. But I just want to tell you that dress sharp and you feel sharp. When you go to the bathroom and you go to wash your hands, you're going to look in the mirror for just a second and you're going to be like, do I look like a business person? Do I look like a dude that deserves to make, you know, 500000 a year? If you don't, elevate your game. Kids for my wife, I level up, level up, level up, level up, let's get to work.